Lewisport is a stepping stone to the north, a busy place for shipping in the early summer. One of the freighters anxious to load is the marine transport. She's bound for the coast of Labrador, and there's a lot of cargo to get on board. Labrador has been locked in ice for half a year. The people there are lean on provisions. So there are all kinds of things to be stowed away in the hold. Explosives, tin milk, shotgun shells, a satellite dish, bananas. On deck there are compressors, mobile homes, a tractor, all destined for the Labrador coast. These coastal freighters are the lifelines to the north. What's the weather like outside? Any swell or any over? No, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. We had a lovely trip up. Lovely trip. Our cargo is freight. Other vessels carry passengers. This is the Sir Robert Bond, returning from Goose Bay, Labrador. She's a big ferry, named after one of our early prime ministers. But don't look for him in the Canadian history books. This was long before we joined Canada. The fishing boats are out too, after the cod and the caper. The seal fishery is over now. Later, will be squid and mackerel. We've got a load, that's for sure. Already, the skippers had to turn down a request to drop into Mary's Harbor to carry a boat north. He hates to refuse anyone, but there's just no space left anywhere. The deck cargo is secured solidly, we hope. No one wants that bulldozer prancing around on the deck in the next swell. We must be a strange sight with our deck cargo and a mobile home stuck out 20 feet over either side of the vessel. The hours pass, the weather stays fine. Marine transport edges northward to the coast of Labrador, slowly, steadily. Till next day, 26 hours after leaving Lewisport, we arrive at Black Tickle. Icebound for half the year, the first vessels to arrive in the spring are welcome sights indeed to the people of Black Tickle. Well, I guess the arrival of the vessel is not quite as important these days, perhaps, for emergency supplies can be flown in. But small planes would have a job handling what we brought to Black Tickle today, wouldn't they? All the construction equipment has to be unloaded, and with that big mobile home hanging out over the side, docking is a bit tricky. Finally, though, the job is done. Marine transport is edged safely to the wharf, and we get ready to unload the clumsy deck cargo. Gingerly, the mobile home is inched away from the vessel. We're all glad to be rid of that. Black Tickle is an exposed place, unsheltered by hills, open to the fierce winds of the North Atlantic. No roads lead here. The ice jams the coast. The snows are deep. But people have learned to survive here, in good times and bad, by hunting and fishing. Many people here are descended from Newfoundland fishermen who came 100 or more years ago as seasonal fishermen and decided to stay. Come to think of it, it's much the same way that Newfoundland Island was settled from England and Ireland in earlier times. The similarity doesn't end there. Newfoundland has always regarded Labrador as a kind of overseas colony in the same way we were treated by Britain. 
It's always been difficult to survive here in Labrador on the fishery alone. The season is short, and at least until fairly recently, prices miserably low. So fur trapping and seal hunting and seabird hunting too became important. And even today, it can spell the difference between a modest living and grinding poverty. Black tickle has had its share of lean years, but things are looking up. All the deck cargo and a bit of what's in the hole is unloaded here. A lot of it is construction equipment. There'll be a new wharf, a new clinic, and a new airstrip in Black Tickle, and the harbor will be dredged. Already there's a fish plant in operation. The fishery here is coming back. That's why Black Tickle has a new lease on life. Since the 200-mile fishing limit was established, the codfish have been increasing and coming closer to shore again, where the small boat fishermen have a chance to catch them. In the 50s and 60s, a wolf pack of foreign fishermen decimated the fish on the offshore breeding grounds. Nothing was left to come to the nets of these fishermen. Now, with some sensible rules in place, the cod fishery is showing signs of recovery. And places like Black Tickle have a chance. What does the future hold for such places, I wonder? But we'd better forget all that now and rush back to the marine transport. She's ready to go. Nobody catch a reliance, that's the worst. Not far out of port, we meet the ice. We have all kinds of words for ice, growlers, fast ice, running ice, winter ice, local slob, valley catters, the list goes on. We know the ice well in these parts. We should. We've been dodging it and walking out on it for centuries. We've been seal hunters. Our ice ships have brought Peary to the North Pole, Scott to the Antarctic. This is Makovic. About 350 people live here, of settler, Inuit, or mixed ancestry. The marine transport is here to unload lumber for a fisherman's wharf. Makovic has been an important center on the northern coast of Labrador for a long time. The sagging fishery crippled the place for a while. But now that the fishery is beginning to bounce back, Okovic is beginning to regain its old prominence. And the arrival of the marine transport is a welcome sight, for everyone is anxious for work to start on the new wharf. We tie up and begin unloading right away. Higher and higher, the marine transport rides in the water as more and more cargo is discharged. Just some wood for a wharf. But here, this simple cargo means a lot. Life is hinged on shipping and the fishery. The wharf is a special place in Newfoundland and Labrador. Part service center, part community center, it's where the young men come from fishing. It's where the old men come to talk and the children to play and catch Connors and Tomcats. Makovic is an important base for longliners in the summertime. A few are from here, but most steam up from Newfoundland as soon as the ice goes. There are 40 vessels in all here this summer. It's a busy port in the fishing season. Life continues to change here in Makovic, as it does all over the coast. There is much that is new and modern. The young have opportunities their parents never had. But this is still the north. The old ways linger. People still must make their living from the land and the sea. 
Here in the north, there's a great love and respect for the old timers, the ones who've learned to survive in this tough land. You see mostly the very old and the very young about the community. The able-bodied men are away on the fishing ground or in the country at this time of year. Labradorians are intensely proud of their heritage and their way of life. Even those long removed from the coast like to return to the freedom of living in this frontier land. One such man is Uncle Ed Anderson. I live in Goose Bay, Happy Valley. Yes, sir, I got my permanent home there. And, but uh, this is my old home here, so I like to come back you know, once in a while, do a bit of fishing, do a little bit of hunting, trapping, and party jumping, and so forth. I haven't got to work for a living because I'm getting a pension. But I still, I like to be out in the boat and uh, on the skidoo. You know, it's been always used to that. Of course, we used to use dog team before the screws come up. And then you know, all motorboat like the uh, Cadia and the uh, Hubbard and those ones. But uh, the reason why I like to come back, I like to be, I like to have freedom and out in the boat. And uh, yeah, I just is in my blood, and uh, that's how it is. You know? Yeah. On the water in summer, roaming the ice fields in winter, traveling inland for the caribou, the coast of Labrador is a special place to those who love the challenge of living on the edge of the northern wilderness. Bill Anderson has been away, but McCovic is the place he loves. I've seen a few small places, like around Newfoundland, and I've seen Montreal, and well, you get an idea that a lot must go on in big places and stuff like that, but the life for me is this quiet life. The Andersons have nine children. Some have stayed at home. Others have moved away to become nurses, airline pilots. One works with the Inuit Association. But they all like to return to the quiet life in Makovic whenever they can. The Andersons are all descended from Thorsten Anderson, a Norwegian who settled here in 1847 and married a Labrador girl. They have many descendants many of them still living at Makovic, the spot their great-great-grandfather fell in love with so many years ago. This, this life in Labrador is, is uh, what I want. I, I don't want no big city or anything like that. It's nice to go for a visit, but I'm always happy to get back here to the real small place and, and uh, live the lifestyle that I grew up with. Northward bound again, the big freighter eases out of the harbor. Notice how high she rides in the water now. Most of the cargo has been delivered. We pass the longliners, moving offshore to set their gill nets. It's a long trip away from home for those fellows. They live on board in cramped quarters for a month or two at a stretch. Marine transport carries a crew of 12. There are always two on the bridge, an officer and a deckhand. Four hour watches, changing at 12 o'clock, four and eight. A shipboard rhythm that stretches way back in time. 
carrying freight along the coast, coasting, is an old and honorable trade here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Until recently, these vessels were the only link many places had with the outside world, the only means of receiving supplies for many hundreds of communities scattered around the coast. It came by sea, or it didn't come at all. The engine room, tidy, spotless. A giant engine that purrs, babied along by the chief engineer. With full bunkers, the vessel can steam for 12 days at 11 knots. Food takes on a whole new meaning when you're on the coastal run. You wouldn't believe how that cool, salty northern air can whip an appetite into shape. One thing is sure, no one is going to starve to death on this vessel. The weather is not consistent here on the coast of Labrador. Winds can whistle up suddenly from any quarter. Brilliant Arctic skies can turn soggy in a moment. With the constant dripping of the rain and the gentle swell of the sea, and a long, easy haul to the next port, it's a time to relax, to take it easy. Is there a ship in the world, I wonder, without a crib board? On we sail. To the east, the open North Atlantic. To the west, the long, empty coast of Labrador. The Vikings sailed along here a thousand years ago. It's the first part of North America visited by Europeans. <laughs> it remains, much the same as it was then, mysterious, forbidding, ever-changing in its moods. Many peoples have come to the coast of Labrador over the years, and few have stayed. It remains sparsely populated, a land removed, cut off almost from 20th century life. Yet look in the hole of the marine transport, a satellite dish for an Indian band in Davis Inlet. The times are changing. We dock at Davis Inlet and begin unloading. Of all the communities on the coast, nowhere has the culture clash been felt more strongly than here in Davis Inlet. For these people are, or were, the people of the caribou. Hunters who lived a nomadic life far inland, following the great caribou herds of the interior barons. They now live on the coast mostly, chained to a new way of life. Perhaps it's the best thing, perhaps it had to happen, but the transition has been far from easy. Davis Inlet is the only Indian community on the northern Labrador coast. It's a beautiful, sheltered, wooded spot. Unlike the other places, its people do not make their living from the sea. No seals or fish for the Nascopi. They are people of the barren lands, not the ocean. Still, the ocean is a vital link for them now. They are dependent on the ship's provisions, the products of an outside world, a world that they use, yet do not trust. The Mushwa Innu, they call themselves, people of the barren lands. They lived in the wildest, most inhospitable place in the world, by our standards, the interior wilderness of northern Labrador, but they called it home. A generation or two back, and these children would be following their fathers, learning how to survive on the land, hunting the caribou, living in tents, canoeing the rivers, trekking over the mountains. Today, the marine transport is their mountain. <laughs> Some will make trips to the country with their families. The old traditions have not died completely. 
But now that the white man's way has been at least partially adopted, it's impossible to turn back the clock. Indian leaders here wrestle with the tricky problems of preserving a unique and delicate culture in the midst of an outside world that threatens to overwhelm. It's not going to be easy. On we go. Once again, we stick the bow of the marine transport toward the north. The weather's grand. It's not every day you can lean on the rail in your shirt sleeves along the coast of Labrador. Time can be long on a vessel, but the crew know that this is the last northward leg of the voyage. Soon they'll be headed south again. Then, after a few days, there'll be another trip somewhere. That's the life of a sailor. You get used to it. You get to like it. Maine is the final port of call. It's the northernmost community in Labrador. Once there were several settlements north of here. Hebron, Okok, Nutak, and way back Rama and Kilinek. They've all been abandoned. Here, as in Newfoundland, it was deemed wise to centralize the population. These are beginning to be shorter now. Yeah, indeed. Nain is an old place. When the Moravian brethren came here as missionaries, it was already frequented by Inuit hunters. That was over 200 years ago, a turbulent time in our history. Today, with the influx of people from further north, Maine's population has swollen to a thousand, mostly Inuit, but with some settler families. In midsummer, many houses are empty, for people move back north to camp and fish for salmon and char in the fjords of the northern mountains, in the lands their parents once lived in year-round. Hunting and fishing, that's the traditional way of life here in the north. It's the only way for most to make a living. But that's not easy in a place this size. Fish and game are easily depleted when too many people crowd together, and that's happened here. Living in a relatively large community, adapting to the ways of the outside world, has not been easy for people accustomed to living as hunters and gatherers. Old traditions die hard, but happily some seem alive and well here in Nain. Under the skill hand of Harry Bright, Carving from stone and bone and ivory are ancient skills passed down through countless generations. Again here in Nain, it's mostly the old and the young you meet on a casual trip like this. Most are away fishing. Perhaps someday this young contractor will be too. But now is the time to be young and free and enjoy the brief burst of northern summer. How do the people of the North find a way to bring in the new without sacrificing all that is rich and beautiful in the old? At the turn of the next century, what will these kids be? Hunters or pro ball players? The choice is theirs, I suppose. I hope. Anyhow, our voyage to Labrador is over now. The skipper is anxious to head back south. The voyage of the marine transport will take a few days. It will take this plane just a few hours. It's wonderful, I suppose, if you're in a rush, if time is important. But for us, well, we'll just dodge on back along the coast. The way it's been done for a thousand years. That's when the Vikings came to the coast of Labrador thousand years ago. After that came the Basque whalers and the Spanish galleons, the French and the British, and the tall schooners from Newfoundland. But even a thousand years is but a moment in this ancient land. The native peoples paddled these waters while the land was still emerging from the Ice Age. It was a cold northern country to those early peoples. But the sea was rich here along the Labrador, and it still is.
Most people just visited Labrador. They knew there were far gentler places to the south and west. But some stayed and dared to call this place home. Their descendants are still there, scattered along a thousand miles of shoreline, here on the northeastern rim of North America. Inuit, Indian, settler, hunters and fishermen, struggling to develop, striving to catch up. Yet at the same time, fiercely proud and protective of their heritage, their way of life. It's a strange, fascinating, turbulent place, this coast of Labrador. Long has it captured the imagination of adventurer and explorer. Its wildness, its remoteness, its beauty. Long has it captured the hearts of the people who live here. It's a special place, raw yet hauntingly beautiful. Labrador, on the edge of Canada, on the edge of time.